What's unique about Carrie Bradshaw's apartment in this show is that the producers actually used five separate locations for her one apartment on the show. What's up everybody, it's Ryan Serhant, your favorite real estate agent in the entire world and also the best at selling anything in the entire universe. Today, we're gonna break down pop culture homes. First up, I wanna talk about Barney Stinson's apartment from your favorite show, How I Met Your Mother. So I got my trusty laptop here, let's pull up some images. There's a lot actually on Barney Stinson's apartment. This show has been on the air forever. So this article is from 2012. Nice. This is like a classic East 81st Street, Upper East Side apartment. And honestly, when I first saw this, I was selling my first building on East 81st Street at 225 East 81st Street. It's a building called The Justin. And the market was awful. And it was so hard. We were trying to sell two bedrooms with little home offices starting at three million bucks. Really, really, really tricky. Very, very bachelor. I love how he's only got the one pillow so that his dates know that you're not staying over. Everything here looks like it's bought from Crate and Barrel. Total investment banker, brand new. Mom used to buy him everything. Move is get everything from Crate and Barrel or the other one, what is it, CB2. And then if you're making a little bit more money, then you can afford things like Restoration Hardware and Herman Miller. Actually, all the furniture in this office building, our whole Sirhan HQ in New York City, is from Herman Miller because what's up? Oh my God. This apartment is located in Yorkville at East 81st Street and First Avenue where a much more modest two bedroom rents for around 2,300 bucks a month. Wow, things have changed in 10 years. And a three bedroom condo goes for around 1.6 million. First of all, I don't know who wrote this because I don't remember three bedrooms selling in 2012 for $1.6 million. You know, he seems kind of stuck up a little bit. Let's look at that. He's got the nice open kitchen, but today it's totally dated. He's got like the darker floors. These are probably gonna have to be redone by somebody. You get the all black kitchen, which used to be all the rage, and now it's just totally dated. See, there's a YouTube video. All right, kind of get like a mosaic backsplash. We've got good closet space. Ugh, this bathroom, brutal. And guess what? Monogram towels don't get you anything when you're trying to actually sell your apartment. It's a one bedroom, there's no bathtub. He's got a black toilet. He's got a black kitchen. He's got black closets. Millwork is kind of nice. He's got his red light behind the library. I think I'll add like, I don't know, $10,000 for that. So let's say this is a plus or minus 700 and 750 square foot apartments on East 81st Street. I doubt it's a condo, it's probably a co-op and there's a lot of them. He's probably getting somewhere between 800 dollars and $900,000 for it. And because he lives on East 81st Street, it's because he classifies himself as an old soul. And I haven't watched How You Met Your Mother in forever, so I hope that's on brand for his character. Okay, up next, I wanna talk about Blair Waldorf's apartment from the original Gossip Girl. Now, if you don't remember, all those kids on that show, super rich kids, that's the drama. And she had this amazing family apartment, duplex penthouse on Fifth Avenue that looked over Central Park. Now, I'm about to close on an apartment that's not even a penthouse, that's just a regular three bedroom on Fifth Avenue looking at the park in not as great of a building as Blair Waldorf lived in for about $11 million. And the whole thing needs to be gut renovated. Blair Waldorf's apartment is about three times that size and it's a penthouse and it faces Fifth Avenue. And we can cheat just a little bit. The actual apartment that Blair was seen in in the show sold in December, 2014 for $35 million. But that's not what's the most interesting to me. It's picking this apartment to put her in on the show. And when we really, really look at this apartment, it is classic. New York City wealth with the checkered tile floors, all the moldings, all the, you know, the crown moldings throughout, all just the detailed millwork and finishes. And it's clear that her mom, if you remember the show, is actually a really, really highly respected fashion designer. So maybe that's how they afford this apartment. I think one of the details was it was given to them as part of the family. I don't remember, but it was definitely a stately home. And she had a huge bedroom with her built-in desk and everything and blue walls. That $35 million apartment that sold in 2014 could be worth upwards of $50 million today had the owner put in just a little bit of work. Like if I grew up in a $35 million apartment on Fifth Avenue, I would be so out of touch with reality. I mean, I still am, but I'd more so, more so. It would be way worse. So next up, we got Carrie Bradshaw's apartment from Sex 
and the city, probably one of the most famous shows ever filmed in and around New York City. Put a lot of places in New York City on the map, like Magnolia, cupcakes. You go to Magnolia today, the show is what, 20 years old? And there's a line out the door for those cupcakes and cakes, completely insane. What's unique about Carrie Bradshaw's apartment in this show is that the producers actually used five separate locations for her one apartment on the show. Carrie says that she lives at 245 E73rd Street and pays about $700 a month for her studio apartment. Today, that apartment with that level of renovation, which was kind of non-existent and pretty dated, rents anywhere from $3,000 to $4,000 a month, which I don't think she would be able to afford. And if we look at some of the photos and the floor plans, it's cute, but it doesn't have central AC. The ceiling height is like eight feet. It's really dated, it's really old. And what you might know if you've ever come to New York City is that the exterior of her building on 73rd Street that they use on the show is actually a building in the West Village and the address is 66 Perry Street. 66 Perry actually sold in 2012 for $9,850,000. And what that buyer is probably doing with it is converting it to single family. And I wonder where she lives now because the new Sex in the City film is being shot right now all over New York City. Like literally today, the trucks were lined up and up and down our entire block, but everybody lives in the West Village. You know, Bradley Cooper is in the West Village. Every, everybody, name a celebrity, they are probably in the West Village, except for Tom Brady, Tom Brady's in Tribeca, and Tom Brady's the man, TB12. All right, last but not least, probably my favorite show of all the shows and penthouses and townhouses we've discussed today is Harvey Specter's apartment from Suits. I wear suits. His apartment, they say, is in New York City and it's the penthouse of the Standard Hotel on East 4th Street. But if anybody knows that show and knows the history around it, the entire thing is actually shot in Toronto. Only the pilot episode was shot in New York City. And I got right here, which I think is super interesting, the penthouse they show him living in, in Toronto, but New York, sold for 12.8 million many years ago at 206 Bloor Street West. It's an interesting, interesting address. And the one they say he lives in in New York is about 1,300 square feet on the inside with a nearly 1,300 square foot exterior on the balcony. But the actual one is like huge. It's 5,700 square feet, two stories. And I love the listing details. Boasts one of the most incredible city vistas you can have. And for like $13 million when this thing sold, that's probably one of the biggest deals Toronto had seen at that time, which makes sense for a high powered attorney. And they charge fees. Dude, do you have any idea how much I pay in legal fees? Like I get the bills all the time. I don't even remember. I feel like when you think of an attorney, they bill you for that hour. It's just not fair. I don't charge anyone by the hour. My success is your success only once you declare success. It's not fair. I'm gonna start charging people by the hour. But his apartment is super cool. It's the most modern of everything we're seeing today. Like the bathroom with that wrapped around kind of cuba glass, the floor to ceiling tile the lighting plan, the open kitchen, the windows. Really, 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 really cool. And this is super interesting. So when they filmed it on the actual penthouse from 2011 to 2016, penthouse 901 at 20 Stewart Street, they covered a bunch of stuff up so it didn't look as big as it actually is in real life. They put in a bunch of false walls, they covered up one of the bedrooms so that it would actually look a little bit smaller. That's why the show, it's about 1300 square feet, but in real life it is like, four times that size. And then in 2016, the actual apartment, like we said, was sold, and so they had to recreate it as a set in Toronto, but they didn't recreate it perfectly. They removed some pillars, and they changed up the room alignments for camera angles and being able to move things around. Here's what I'll just say. Apartments that are used in movies, television, or where actual celebrities live are always worth more than if they were not used in any of that. Production companies pay big money to be able to actually film in places. And so you could use that if you live in New York City or Toronto, apparently. And then when you go to actually sell, you can say, also, you are buying Harvey Specter's apartment from Suits. And it just brings more exposure, it brings more you know, prestige, and people will actually pay a little bit more money for them, or at least know about the apartment versus other apartments that are now just boring because that apartment hasn't been used in a TV show. Case in point, when I put my apartment in Soho up on the market for rent, I thought it was gonna take me forever, rented it in one hour. 
And that's it, that's where I'm gonna leave it. If you like this series, make sure to comment down below, like, subscribe, send it to your friends and your family and people you don't even know. Come on, let's go. And any other apartments or houses from any TV show or movie you want me to talk about and really dig into, please leave it in the comments. I would love to and I'll see you guys next time.